day. Five thirty eight road builder pre, pre I guess was the predecessor of the three twenty twos, three twenties. Um, what they did with this system, besides change your final drive and the torque specs and those things, is they went with a four inch longer track, which raised the idlers another two inches, which also gives you another four inches of ground clearance. So if you're out in a high stumped area, you should be able to clear most of that stuff. Um, your PP3 rail system and positive pin retention system is a, is a complete redesign from what they had before with the PP2. And the PP1, we learned some pin walk and things like that. Progressively gotten better, and this is what we ended up with. This is used across the board on all of the forestry machines. This style, obviously, the length's a little bit different on each one just because you're dealing with a little bit more torque forces. Um, we did away with the 18 inch riser, went to a 6 inch riser. So you're not having to tilt the cab forward any longer. So having this bolted down risers is key for guys trying to get in and out quickly. Um, you have less, for safety advantages, you have less room to fall if you were to fall off the side of it. What it did also is when you're tipping that cab forward, you can imagine where it would be sitting where this bucket is. So you couldn't haul a bucket with it. You're either trying to, I guess, hard line it through a couple places and not get in trouble with it and keep the bucket up underneath you. This obviously gives you the opportunity to retain all that stuff in one single space and you're only 14 foot too high depending on where your trailer is. Um, access, obviously it was on the ground, it'd be a little easier. Before our, this is a completely redesigned cab. Before we had the, the original three-sided front side entry. Um, your visibility is tenfold. We also used to have most of these bars over here. Your door, when you go to your door, your door only used to be about this wide and it would only open up about this far so your your access to the machine is much better now than it used to be um, we went away with the single chain shot glass to a double chain shot glass which allowed us to get rid of all of the bars in the front window which gives the operator much better visibility they did the same kind of thing when they redesigned the cab with the door and the side windows putting chain shot glass in there allowing more separation of the bars so you have better vision. Okay. Um, everything else is pretty much standard as far as your boom and your reach. Cylinders are a little bit updated. Most everything is going to be engine, pump, um, your swing drives, all those things have been updated. Besides the overall dimensions of the cab, it's much bigger, much easier to get in. The flip up uh, controls here which came from our excavator side used to be down like this all the time which made it very hard for a guy to get into the seat and he would always hit the joystick it's not like the machine's going to do anything if you do that but it just makes it very 
difficult to ingress or egress. So with the new system, it allows us to swing back, which allows the operator to get in between the travel pedals and the seat quickly and easily. Uh, going further in here, your adjustability in all your seats so you can get to everything you've got. Um, typically don't talk about the control so much anymore, um, just because most everybody has pilot drive systems in their joysticks. This is now electric over hydraulic. So the ease of being able to um, speed up or slow down the implements, it's much easier, it's like the touch of a finger. Um, the new monitor, our monitors before used to be up here, they were about this big, and you're consistently pushing buttons. So if we turn this on real quick, your cat symbol will come up, and it's going to give you a complete touch screen system. Once it starts, shows you your pattern control of what your buttons are set up. If you look at this up here, it shows you the, the side roll of the machine and the pitch forward and back. And that's real time, whatever ground you're on, vehicle, anything like that, you will see those values change depending on how the machine is sitting. So we're gonna go ahead and press okay here real quick. Gives you a split view, this is the rear camera. This is your right side camera, which is typically your blind side. You wanna change that view. It's gonna give you the right side. It's gonna give you back and right. Back and right side and rear. And that's all at a swipe of a finger each way you go. It'll go back to the previous screen. Um, most of this stuff too is, is pretty um, intuitive as far as your fuel level, your def level, your hydraulic temperature, and your engine coolant temperature. Um, very easy, very basic. Obviously it's a completely different operating system than what most people are used to. Um, the idea is it's gonna be very user friendly and um, it's just time in the seat, I guess you'd say. Everything that you have here as far as controls, if you look at dexterity of a, of a person, how they sit, make sure they're comfortable, very easy to get to. Um, the idea behind a lot of this stuff here is just, it's, it's what you know, bread and butter, it's what we've always used. Um, your responses are just gonna be a little crisper and we have the flexibility to time those impulses within the joysticks and things like that to the operator. Now, if you're switching operators around a lot, that can be a little conducive, but within the system, you can actually set operators. So we'll go there and we can go change operator. We can actually put a code entry, we can add operators. So each operator has essentially their, their own profile per se. You can even log in with your with your phone if you have the app. You can Bluetooth into it, and it's going to know what you, who you are, who's running the machine. Um, it takes a little bit of time to get it set up, but it but it is pretty easy and user friendly there. Um, your air conditioner is all here. You're not hitting any knobs to your right anymore like you'd be using, or if you had a radio and you're bending over this way, um, that's all changed. You can go back out of there. Your radio is actually going to be in the monitor as well. You've got all those easy keys. It's all touch screen as well. You can go to auxiliary, Bluetooth, those things. We'll go back another screen, come back in there, your phone. You have access to your phone as soon as you connect it. You can play your music through it. You can talk through it. We can set the one of the buttons up on the controller to answer the phone and hang up the phone. I, um, it's Again, it's just it's trying to keep the operator engaged into what they're doing rather than have them they can still be pretty efficient, but they're more efficient when everything's at their fingertips. Um, your work tool and bucket settings, you've got a plethora of attachments that you can run through these. Um, most of them are preset for the most part, but there there is a lot of different features in this that you can actually set the pressures particular to whatever attachment, if it's non, non CAD or you know, whatever attachment you want, as long as we have the specs for that flow and pressure, we can set those up in the monitor as well. We can rename these. We can, we can do a lot of different, a lot of different things that you couldn't do before at a touch of a fingertip rather than swapping hoses around and doing things like that. Uh, go back out of here. You have your electronic OMM. So instead of picking your book up out of your seat every five minutes, you actually have an electronic version of it sitting right in front of you. We can go to the forward, we can go to the safety section. As soon as we hit that, we can hit each one of these and be able to go to each 
your maintenance section, that's another one. If you get a, a call, hey, I think this thing needs an oil change, you can go right into this and it'll tell you exactly the time and interval that is recommended from CAT to do so. Um, at any time, if you're in this monitor and you just want to go back to the home screen, you just hit home, you're right back here again. Here's your quick keys. So if you wanted your HVAC system, it's right there. Instead of going back through all the notes, there's your radio, go back there. This is gonna be your heavy lift option. So if you're in where you're lifting something, what it does is it'll actually tune okay. the system to actual picking capabilities. You turn that on, you can turn it off at any point in time as well. Okay, I'll get back to you. You got your phone. Oh, less than an hour. And you've got some more of your overload warnings, okay. your um, auto idle. Um, you've got auto shutdown. You've got a vacuum pump here as well. So if you blow a hose, you can I'll enable that. Heavy lift, you got fine swing. Fine swing's a little different now. Um, Right, in, in Europe, they call it fine swing. Here in the US, we call it free swing. Um, when you turn fine swing on, it gives you free swing ability. Before we would have to pull out an orifice or put an orifice in after we played with that a little bit, this one makes it a little bit easier. So you, if you're used to that kind of thing, you can do that as well. And it's essentially just adjusting your swing brake. Um, work light control, you got it here. Shows you all your work lights on your machine in the back. You can tell it to be on or off just really depends on what you want to do this one's right over the top of the camera is really nice um, early in the morning late at night it's dark um, it really illuminates what you're gonna see in, within that camera in the back so um, you got two light switches in here you got back and front that's all right here on your soft keys you got your two-speed travel so you got your turtle and your rabbit soft key here windshield wipers squirter for the windshield wipers that's basically mute for your radio or your phone, and then that's just your information that's gonna take you into the screen. Um, over here on the left, you have your backup alarm. So if you're loading early in the morning um, and you're kind of in, in an area where there's a lot of houses in your yard, you can actually hit that button. It'll turn off the, uh, the travel alarm. This is gonna be your quick coupler engage and disengage when you're switching your attachments. Um, there are a few other things in this machine that people probably aren't as used to as coming from a, you know, a predecessing model, you're gonna be used to um, high power or eco mode, things like that. This, you actually have high power, eco, and smart mode. Um, what smart mode does within an EH system is it allows the, the machine's trying to think a little bit. So if it fills your impulse very, very lightly, it's only gonna give you so much oil. Um, to make that function a little crisper and a little softer, kind of both in the same. So if you ram on it, it's going to be a little quick, it's going to be crisper. If you're coming back on, it's going to be a little softer. Um, typically what you see within that smart mode is the machine, the ECMs are talking with each other to try and help smooth out that operation. Um, it's not bridging a gap between somebody that's never operated and somebody that's operated for years. It's just trying to help you conserve fuel, conserve life of the components, conserve life of the machine. Um, most most folks that you talk to anymore if you give it a thousand horsepower and a whatever they want all the energy in the world that's what they typically want it doesn't mean it's right but it doesn't mean it's wrong so the idea is to kind of be able to give you a flexibility of depending upon your job task to be able to use high power mode um, typically speaking the 538 we've got a few field fall units out there um, we've got one particular is a log load